Hey guys, and welcome to the January 2016 edition of Budget MTG. This is a monthly series I do where I talk about a budget deck for either modern or standard for the most part. I may delve into some different formats later, but so far that's what they've all been. Um, and these are all decks that are sort of, they're intended for Friday Night Magic play, basically, that are, that are fairly competitive against Tier 1, but don't carry the typical price tag of a Tier 1 deck. Um, and before I get into talking about the deck, I just want to say um, my channel's in partnership with um, paperchampion.net. It's a great Magic the Gathering site. My videos are also posted there. And if you want to find some more great Magic the Gathering content, you should check it out. Anyway, we'll get to talking about this deck now. Um, so mono black devotion, mono anything devotion was very big in standard until Theros rotated out. And it's never really made a big dent in modern, but I think that there is some potential for it. And I think black may be the place where it has the most potential. So this is a mono black devotion deck that also happens to have a lot of zombies in it, basically. It doesn't have a whole lot of zombie synergy other than the grave crawler, as you can see there. But basically, it's just a deck that tries to abuse Nykthos to uh, produce a lot of mana um, and also tries to use it uh, to... Tries to uh, use the devotion uh, from like Grey Merchant of Asphodel to just win the game. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the cards. This is one of the cheaper decks I've ever done um, on this series, especially modern decks. It costs under 24 tickets uh, as of the recording of this in mid-January of 2016. Um, and that's partly because it's a monocolor deck and three Nykthoses is way cheaper than Shocklands or Painlands or Fetchlands. So, yeah. So... We'll go ahead and get started talking about the deck. I have four Grave Crawlers in it. I actually didn't initially have this card in the deck. I was just sort of building the deck, trying to find creatures that went well with the Devotion archetype. Um, and it just so happened that several of them were zombies, so I figured there's no reason not to put Grave Crawler in. He adds to Devotion too, even if he doesn't add a lot of it. So that's why Grave Crawler's in here. Um, he's a great card. If you're in black and you're running enough zombies in modern, he may as well be in your deck because... He's a huge problem who just keeps coming back, unless he gets Path to Exiled or something like that. Um, I also have one Doomblade main board. I have two more in the sideboard, as you can see. One Go for the Throat main board. Again, two more in the sideboard. Um, you know, that's just because it's not actually good against all opponents to have these, so I don't want to have too many of them in my deck, but I have ways to side into more of them if I want to. Um, I also run Nantuko Shade, one of the few non-zombies in the deck. It works very well with... Nykthos because it adds two devotion, but it also is a mana sink. Like, even if I don't have my profane command or, you know, I can't play Demigod of Revenge or something on a turn using the mana from uh, Nykthos, um, I can just pump it all into my shade uh, to do massive amounts of damage. And my opponents have to deal with the fact when I'm swinging with, Nik with Nantuko Shade that I often have a massive amount of m mana and black mana available, and he can hit really hard, so... Um, I like him for that. He's also just a decent beater as a 2-mana two 2-1. Two this is basically kind of an aggro deck with a devotion theme. Um, we also have Stromgald Crusader, who is a zombie, and very similar to Nantuko Shade. He's a 2-mana two 2-1, two uh, and this one has protection from white, which means he, die, he uh, dodges some of the important removal in modern, like Path to Exile and Lightning Helix. Um, and he's also a good mana sink, although not quite as efficient as uh, the Shade is, um, but still quite good. And he can gain flying, which is definitely useful. Um, I also run three Victims of Night. Um, I feel like they're gonna, they can kill more things in modern than go for the Throat or Doomblade, and this deck can get the double black for it pretty easily, obviously. Um, so that's why it's there. I have three Withered Wretches main board, a fourth in the sideboard, as you can see. Um, he's kind of he's just a really good hate bear that happens to have double black and also happens to be a zombie. Um, He's a 2-mana two 2-2, two two, but his exile ability is super relevant in modern because you can... It hurts Snapcaster Mage because you can... If you have one mana untapped, you can exile whatever they want and try to give flashback to. Um, it helps against Tarmogoyf. And, you know, I men mentioned two of the most popular and important cards in modern right there. Um, it's also good against decks that run a lot of stuff with uh, Delve. Um, because you can make it so they don't have the cards to delve as easily. I mean, it's obviously better against the creatures and the instant speed things because they could just delve in response, but it's good against, you know, Tassiger and Gurmag Angler. Um, and I'm sure there's other things that I can't think of off the top of my head right now that Withered Wretch is good against, so that's why he's in here. And I have a fourth one in the sideboard for matchups where he's really good. I have one Gatekeeper of Malakir ma main board, another non-zombie, but he uh, is a two-mana two-two. Like most of these things, he's got two power and has two man for double black, so he's good for the um, devotion count. Um, 
And on top of that, he can get rid of problem creatures like Geist, uh, and he's very good against Boggles as well because they usually, you know, stack all their auras on one creature, and Gatekeeper of Malakir deals with that. Um, and I have the second one in the sideboard to help me deal with, uh, um, to side in against decks that it's really good against. Um, so, yeah, I, I run Underworld Connection instead of Phyrexian Arena, mostly just because of budget. Um, if you had Phyrexian Arenas, they would be better in this deck than Underworld Connections. They both add Devotion and draw you cards, which you like. Um, I have four Garalf's Messengers, one of the other zombies in the deck, and one of the best black cards, black creatures anyway, in Modern. Um, three mana, three two. Enters the battlefield tapped. You know, does they did have to balance him a little. Uh, but when he enters the battlefield, uh, he drains the opponent to life. And then he has Undying. So board sweepers don't bother him. He comes back. Um, if you have Gravecrawler and Messenger in play and your opponent uses a board sweeper, your Messenger comes back and then you can just play a Gravecrawler again. I mean, they just won't do it uh, when that's the case, usually, unless they can somehow sweep your board again. Um, and he's got Triple Black as his mana cost, which is very helpful for our Devotion. Then we have Still Moon Cavalier, who's kind of like Stromgald Crusader, but, you know, better. He does cost one more mana, so he should be. Three mana, two, one. It was protected from white and from black, so it not only dodges the important white spells in the format, it dodges lots of important black removal in the format as well, like Terminate. Um, and uh, it can gain flying, and it gets plus one, plus zero, the same way that the uh, Stromgold Crusader does, but it can also give itself for a strike if it needs to. Um, and it can, it's also a zombie, by the way. Um, and it's a mana sink, just like, um, you know, a lot of the creatures in this deck are in the event that our Nykthos uh, is in play and uh, we don't have Profane Command. Then we have Grey Merchant of Asphodel, a card that was very good in standard in its day. Um, it's a 5 mana 2-4, again, a zombie. Uh, drains the opponent life equal to your devotion. So this can be like the big haymaker that ends the game frequently. Um, I also run de two Demigods of Revenge. Obviously, they're better when you can like stack four into a deck, but there's just not room in this deck. Um, and that would make the curve too high, I think, as well. Even with Nykthos, we don't really want to have tons of five drops in the deck. But even just e even just having one in play is a big problem, and it adds five to our devotion. So if our opponent doesn't deal with it, and we have Nykthos in play, things are going to get crazy. Um, plus, I do run at least two of them. There, I don't know if there's any reason to only ever run one, because if you have two of them, it at least means that if one of them's in your graveyard, the other one will come back. And then we have another, another big Haymaker card in the form of Profane Command. Um, Unlike Grey Merchant of Asphodel, it does need Nykthos to be at its best, um, but it can be very good um, without Nykthos, but it can do some crazy things. I've done some crazy, crazy things with it in this format, like my opponent being, you know, close to their starting life total, but then I, I use, uh, I have a Grey Merchant of Asphodel in my graveyard, and then I use Nyk, uh, Nykthos with Profane Command to add um, something like 9 mana to my mana pool, and then I drain my opponent uh, for 9 or 10 or whatever um, and get back my Grey Merchant of Asphodel uh, from my graveyard. I guess it would have to be 5 is what I did. Um, yeah, it must have been 5. So I drained them for 5 and got the Grey Merchant back and, and then must have swung to kill them. But either way, Profane Command can do crazy stuff with the Grey Merchant, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is the deck. I'll talk a little more about the sideboard. I touched on some of it. We have Duress for against the control decks. Pithing Needle, um, one weakness of this deck, unfortunately, is that it's not especially good against Affinity. If Affinity is big in your area, then this deck's not the best way to go. Um, but Pithing Needle is one of the few cards in the sideboard that's good against Affinity because you can name Ravager or Cranial Plating or uh, any, any of their important cards. Uh, we have the second Gatekeeper of Malakir that I mentioned, a sec a fourth Withered Wretch, as I mentioned, and then we have the Doom Blades and the Go for the Throats, like I mentioned. We also have one Self-Inflicted Wound, which is good against the Boggles decks and good against other green and white decks um, that have Hexproof dudes. Transgress the Mind's pretty good against Tron. The Spoiler of Souls is good against Control because, like Gravecrawler, it just refuses to die um, permanently. So if your opponent keeps, like, sweeping the board and you have your Despoiler, then it's not a big deal. And I have a fourth Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which is... Also, I think at its best when you bring it in in a control matchup because it gives you uh, another shot at drawing this big card that can just end the game uh, in the late game um, against a control opponent. So that is the deck. Um, you know, a few upgrades you could do if you have limitless money are the deck would be better with Cavern of Souls because you could make Grey Merchant of Asphodel and your other zombies uncounterable. Um, and like I said, three Phyrexian Arenas instead of Underworld Connection. Um, I think those are the only big things that I would change about this deck um, if it weren't a budget deck. So, yeah, so I'll play three matches with this in the two-man queues, and uh, you guys can see how it works. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.